obviously this is a larger conversation. I want to go into some Prince thing here, but I noticed this week there's been a big uh, conversation online <laughs> <laughs> about the uh, upcoming Sign of the Times uh, special edition, deluxe edition Blu-ray that's coming out. I think it's like a German release. I'm not mistaken. Swiss. Swiss. Okay. And they're going to have, what's well, cool. They're going to have the movie is being put on Blu-ray. Um, but I think the big deal is that there's a documentary that is made that will be a part of this. And they're also going to have like a commentary with uh, peach and black podcast. Shout out to those guys. Um, Dr. Funkenberry is going to do a forward shout out to him. And mm. nah, I don't know what the mm, that's my guy. Shout out to him. Nah, I, no, nah, I, 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 not there. I'm looking like, wait a minute, but uh, oh no, we, the, yeah, keep going. Michael Dean ain't in it. Hey, I got nothing, nothing to do with it, and I don't have to have anything to do with it. But but the contention was some actually. A shout out to Stephanie, part of the podcast who's family. Not Stephanie, Erica uh, brought this. Erica up. let that tweet fuse. Yeah, she, she did. Erica put did her thing. Uh, she asked, basically was asking the question, you know, why isn't there any black representation or perspective, you know, in this project, uh, whether it be band members or, you know, fan commentators or what, what have you. And it was very interesting uh, back and forth with the actual director jumped in on Twitter uh, and then uh, another cat, uh, Scott Woods. Yeah, um, he 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 really got in and brought broke a lot of things down. But you know, my initial reaction after reading some of this, you know, it's it was one of those types of things where I think the director kind of got in his feelings a little bit and maybe kind of triggered and was getting very defensive without actually like thinking about his responses first and. A lot of times when you just kind of go off the cuff like that and you're dealing with race and stuff, you can kind of expose or show some things that, you know, like, ah, eh, you kind of making they, you making they point by your responses. And I wanted to get, ask you guys sort of what you thought about this. Uh, and I'm going to sort of gather my thoughts on this as I'm talking about it. And I have to be, I'm very careful what I say here. Uh, Cause I don't want to sway one way or the other, but but and Pooh, I, I saw that you you had even com you commented on this on Twitter. And what were some of your thoughts about this whole thing? And what are your oh, thoughts God. on this release? I was like, God damn, why you went to me first? Cause I don't forgot what oh, I said. Oh my bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did say something that this is what an ally looks like in regards yes, to. Yes, yes, uh, I was talking Erica. to Erica because, um, you know, there are things that you know minorities um, oppress groups are trying to you know to to get over and then you see someone from the dominant society whether it be a white male or a white female using their white privilege to shine a light on that and i said yes this is what an ally looks like she didn't she didn't have to say you know black people need to be involved with this and i i know i've met her she's a great person but she did that and it's like yes i had to applaud and tip my hat to her but just overall i just find it just such bullshit that they're saying that they reached out to the black members in the band and some of them just said no or they were looking for money, which I don't which I don't have a problem with those people saying, yo, what's the check looking like? Because you're they're selling the DVD. Now, there might not be a lot of money in selling this DVD, but you ain't putting it out for free. So, yeah, I have no problem with them saying I'm not going to be on it. I'm sorry. I have no problem. If what the directors can be believed in saying that the black people, which I just can't imagine only the black people said that. The fuck out of here. Where's the check at? But even more so, like like Erica and like Kenisa was saying, you could have went to some black historian. You could have hit up Nelson George. You could have hit up Torre. You could have hit up, um, oh my God, Questlove. I'm sure he might have done something for free. I mean, he loves Prince. And then even to some of the black uh, podcasters, like I keep saying, the reason why I, I, I gave the grunt after you said Funkenberry, that was not a slight on him at all. I was just thinking, like, how the fuck is Michael Dean not contacted? Not saying you would do it, but I'm just saying, like, how are you not? How is he not contacted? You were known for having the longest running Prince themed podcast, and you're not talked about, and you're not talked to. 
uh, Rodney, he's doing something. Prince's friend, I believe he's black. Please, I don't want to insult anyone. He's not contacted? So, but my thing was just like, Peach and Black, who are all white, I'm Australia, Funky Berry, white person, You, you, they found them. They got them to participate. But the black people, the black fans, the black historians, the black podcasters, the black YouTubers, yeah, it, it does come off funny style. All right, all right. Uh, big Sexy, man. What really got my attention about it was, like you said, the way the director responded to it. You know, he got real defensive and aggressive and was, I'm going to block you and all that. I'm like, dude, they ask you a question, a valid question, and you were dancing around it. Okay. You went to a few people. They said no. They wanted to get paid, whatever. But now hearing Ant talk, and I'm not a fan of Torrey by any leap of the imagination, but there's not a camera that fool hasn't loved. So they could have definitely talked to him or Nelson George. <clears throat> you know, and again, when they talked to fans, I'm not saying podcasters, I'm not saying people in the studio, and they could have talked to Dave Hampton, by the way. I'm saying just fans, they could have talked to some black fans too. Now, the only thing that I'm assuming, and I could be completely wrong, is that it was filmed completely on location over there in Switzerland, where they didn't have access to a lot of these people. Absent that, if the producers were here domestically and talking to, say, Funkenberry, and they couldn't reach out to anybody else, come on, man. That's a bad look. And then the way he handled it just made it even worse. In fact, the director's handling of it makes the whole thing look real suspect. He could have handled this a lot better and addressed this in the manner that was presented to him by Erica, but he didn't do that. He showed his ass, and now his thing is all fucked up. He gets what he's going to get now. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, Q-Storm, I don't know, did you want to you have anything to well, add? we talked about it at length offline and uh everybody's pretty much said everything uh i i don't understand how you weren't contacted because um i mean i see you more, well maybe because i know you and I, I go to your site i don't see that much from prince.org or funkenberry or anything. I, i'm seeing branding from podcast juice and prince podcast so it, it does seem strange anytime a director like, you know, I, I talk a lot of shit online. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I go back because <laughs> I'm opinionated, and I know this. But if I'm making real money, I'm not going to be spending my time <laughs> arguing with people. And I'm, if, I'm not going to be the director of a movie talking about, oh, I'm going to block you. and I, What? I mean, just give the people what they want every now and then. I mean, right is right. You know, I'm rambling, but Hell yeah. Uh, I, I'll say this. I, I, I don't... And this is not a oh, why come Michael Dean. I don't need to be a part of any of them. That's, that's not the point. The thing about it is, with Prince, you can't deny who he was as a person. You know, as an entertainer, as a man, and that would mean you have to embrace everything about him. And one of the things I've I was kind of saying this slightly before he died. But I was like, you know, one of the reasons we want to do this podcast is, of course, we love Prince and, and the music and everything like that. But we want to make sure that our voice is right up there with along with all the other mainstream media and other people that sometimes dominate the conversation when they talk about uh, these black iconic type of dudes. And I'm saying that from the point of view, I, mean, I live in Seattle where Jimi Hendrix is from. And I saw how they made Jimmy this super big thing, which he should be, but I noticed that they wasn't really dealing with a lot of the people who really knew him, <laughs> like some of the black people. It was always sort of framed as he, it wasn't even like promoted to us, it seemed like. And I'm like, that just seems weird. He is a black man. He, he could not have just not been about race or, you know, it didn't matter. 
And when I got to meet people that grew up with him, that lived here, uh, had been around him, I was like, man, I need to get more appreciation for Jimi Hendrix. I, to me, it, it was marketed as something so foreign to me. You know, even though it was a black dude doing rock music and one of the best ever doing it, one of the best guitars. And I started thinking, I would never want them to see them do that with Prince. Like, I could easily see how they would just make him be like this rock god and we're just going to deal with the music and he was about, race didn't matter to Prince. And I, I'm like, eh, nah, we ain't going to let you do that. <laughs> because I remember when it was only us that fucked with Prince. You know, in the early 80s and all that. It was only ones that was even at the concerts and doing this thing. And as I started to meet people as we've been doing this podcast and stuff, I hear all these different types of stories. And I was like, wow, I didn't know Prince was that. Uh, you know, people were saying not low key, but dude was militant on some shit. I was like, oh, okay. So as I, the more I learned, I was just like, you know what, man, we got to make sure that we're a part of the conversation because whether it's uh, on purpose or they just don't be thinking about it, they'll leave us out of this shit. And that's not to say that they're doing this to, to on purpose do it, but sometimes they're just not aware or sometimes, and I've said, I had people tell me this off the record, like, man, I'm just uncomfortable to have those conversations about Prince. I, I don't, I'm not black and I don't never really deal in those situations. I, I just love the music and I can respect that. But I'm like, well, that's cool. So now we have people who can have those conversations and maybe we can, maybe we can make it so you don't seem so uncomfortable and may give all of us a greater awareness, awareness of who Prince really was. He, he wasn't just some dude that was born and was magically talented. <laughs> you know, there was all of these things that went into making him the man that he was and all of that matters. You know, the, the racial politics of his city, his family, mother, father, all of that go into it. He ain't just wake up one day and here I am. I'm ready to sing and dance for you. Nah, man, there's a, there a lot going on. And, and he told you there was a lot going on. You listen to his lyrics. So going back to the sign of the times thing, I think you have to have representation of that. It just You can't get away from Prince. Then to me, you're not dealing with the full person. And I think that Prince at that particular time optically right visually was pushing that like okay y'all know me to have this interracial band and we conquered the world and did our thing now i'm about to do this and it's gonna be a lot more of my people is gonna be in the band it's going in a different direction there's a reason for that you know just as there's a reason for when the revolution when he was like yo i want to have three brothers on stage dancing with me they're not the dopest dancers and shout out to wally <laughs> that's my man but I'm saying there's a reason why I want to have three black men up on stage with me I want to switch it up a little bit I'm, I'm going on some other shit it wasn't just because they was dancing their ass off <laughs> right so to me it matters so the same reason that would matter and it transitions to this now I'm going to bring this sister on stage with me cat I'm about to show I'm about to do something it ain't just for, you know, it ain't just because she looked cool. In my opinion, it's not. All of that stuff plays into it. So if you can't have somebody to speak on that, you're not really speaking on the entirety of that project, Sign of Times. That, that's my opinion. Now, uh, do they have to? No, they don't have to do nothing. Uh, but... Unlike back in the days, we have social media. So when you put out something to the world, you can't be mad when the world has questions. <laughs> be like, uh, how come this is that way? You can't be mad if they ask you questions. You want my attention about it or you want the exactly. people's attention. So you have to be ready to answer those questions. And in a lot of ways now, it's all about what do you do in the face? It's not even adversity. It's just of Hey man, um, I, I got a question. How come this ain't on there? You can't. Be, oh well, this, uh, huh? you know that's just not the way to handle it. Just, so you know, I'm not gonna say what people should shouldn't do, but uh, Prince is a big thing, and you can't ignore 
any pieces of him. And you certainly can't re- ignore him as being a, a black man. And in 2019 and, and going forward, we're not we're not going to let you ignore that. We're going to ask the questions. <laughs> you can block us or act like you don't see us talking, but we're going to be talking. That's just the way it is. Uh, we don't there's, there's no gatekeepers. So you can't snuff our voices out. You can just turn your ears off. But we're going to ask the questions. So that's just the only thing I would say about it. I mean, you know, I, I'm curious to see this. Oh, I know what I don't want to talk about is, is when they say that band members or black people wanted money. And I'd be like, you damn right. <laughs> Somebody getting paid off this project? You mean to tell me I was in the band immortalized on records and videos and y'all doing this and you want to make some content and you want me to be the content and I don't get to eat? Nah, it ain't happening, partner. So I salute. I'm not saying who did or whatever, but whatever band member was like, nah, cut me that check. I salute them for that. Because they the ones, without them, you ain't got no kind of, then it's just a whole bunch of motherfuckers talking who wasn't there. <laughs> In the same way. Good point. <laughs> I, 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 and I say this as being the podcast where we interview people. There's been times when I'll be thinking of certain, oh, this would be a cool project. Maybe I can get such and such on there. But I'll be thinking like, you know what? We got to break bread. Because why are they going to come and give me all that shit for nothing? And I'm going to turn around and, and might flip it or something might monetize in some other way happens. And they not eating. But my shit is based off of them. So when you have a, a situation where historically our artists wasn't getting paid or didn't maybe didn't get what they probably should have. And now this is whole sort of cottage industry. And, and they about to be like, yeah, we about to put out this project. It ain't free. And then the people we want to be in the movie, though, but they ain't getting paid. That doesn't seem funny stuff. It'd be like, oh, well, I'm making an Avengers movie. Well, listen, uh, Robert Downey Jr., you should just be happy we're going to put you in this movie. You don't need to be paid for it. <laughs> like, huh? I need my bread, son. This whole thing is about me. So I, I, I'm not mad if the band members like, you know, what, what's that... What's the ends looking like? I mean, now, if they're making outrageous things, I need to get, I can understand that, but you, you should be able to sit at the table and say, okay, listen, we respect what you do for the culture, what you have done. Uh, shit, this thing is about you in some degree. Here, here's, here's what we can break you off. And if they say no at that point, well, then you keep it pushing. But I wouldn't be like, well, they just wanted some money and that's why they're not in it. Uh Hey, if you look at what are your prince, when will we be paid for the works we done? That was his steez. <laughs> I've sat, I've sat in a room where Prince was going in on Paul Allen and certain people. It was like they want me to play where the money at. I ain't playing Nathan. Uh, they want us to come over there after this concert and do another show over here at the such and such museum at the same museum where they got an exhibit on them right now and he looked at all of us and said but where the money going because they ain't saying nothing about paying me and I know that place don't run for free and, and Maceo was with him too and everybody said well Maceo was in the exhibit over there and he looked at Maceo like huh Maceo was like uh, uh, uh. and what happened at the end of the night Prince didn't play a damn thing. They had a little dinner party. <laughs> he did a little tour walkthrough. Peace. So if that's how he got down, you can't be surprised if the band members get down the same way. That's the legacy. So you can't be mad at the fans or other people who will be like, how come they ain't in it and why is they there? It is, it is what it is, man. It's all about how you deal with it. To me, you should just have an honest conversation and be like, look, we just didn't think about that. Our bad. You know, we've been doing how we do. Exactly. And, and, all you, you know, need to do. Yeah, man. We're we, we, we sorry about that. You know what I'm saying? We'll we get y'all on the next run. Uh, we're going to keep it pushing and that's what it is. But you can't, you know, but if you come off, you're defensive and, you know, you just start playing in that same old little story. It's, it was funny to me. I just look at it and just like, I already know what that is. It's all good. Salute to Peach and Black. Salute to Funkin' Berry. 
good opportunity. Keep it pushing, man. I, I'm not tripping about it because to me, we all got access to cameras and stuff. So we can do whatever. We can do our own thing. We don't have to deal with that. So I salute their project. But it, but was it funny style? Yeah, it is. But, you know, hey, end of the day, I wish them success. I, I can't play the video no way because I, I don't have a region to play. So it don't make you me. That's the thing. I don't think it's like a lot of air it. over here anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't, you know, keep it pushing, but, but anyway, that's just my thought on it. Uh, I'm sure I would hear back on this, but, uh, it is what it is, man. You know, um, I, I want, I want to see the real sign of the times, special edition, you know, breakdown. If, if they do that one day, like I need that shit in 4k, that's what would get my attention. Damn. All I, is it going to be in 4k? It's going to be like super high def, but, uh, but anyway, because to me, the standard right now is that Japanese Blu-ray. It, exactly. I'm good with that. Yeah. yeah. Cool in the game. <laughs> you know, somebody can top that. Let's see it. So, but anyway, it is what it is. Salute to them. Uh,